Kuba lindaba, Kuba lindaba, Kuba lindaba, Salwande Kubindaba, 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 Salwande Kubindaba, Kubindaba, Kubindaba.
let's appreciate him once more. And then, uh, the other saints need a caller because of our time. Uh, our pastor has to come right away. I'll invite the band to come. Amen. The brass band, quickly come. Amen. The cloud of glory is moving. Let us move with the cloud. Move. Oh, let us move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. Oh, the cloud of glory is moving. Let us move. With the cloud move, oh, let us move with the cloud. Let us let your spirits, let your spirits arise, let your strength be renewed.
Hallelujah. Send me a little Jesus Christ. We're going to play the song called uh, The Great Physician. Be blessed. Oh, I'm reminded it's a middle. Uh, we're going to mix it with a song called In the Land of Faithless Day. Lyrics and I'll see you along with the correct song. Let's take one together.
Every 
Christ, we are happy to gather again for the afternoon service, believing that God has something rich for us in store. And we will open our Bibles. We will open to Ephesians chapter 5, verse. Verse 15, it says, Seeing then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming time, because the days are evil. I think I made a mistake there in the, in the redeeming time, because the days are evil. I say today I'll be speaking about redeeming time, about managing time. Um, let us pray our heavenly father we thank you for this privilege that a mortal being can get to come again to your presence to be serviced by your spirit father to be tuned to be in line with your word may you take over this opportunity father this time and help us to be better people to be better christians better believers father as you teach us how to value the time that you have given us we commit this service into your hands in jesus name amen here we see the Bible is saying, we may be seated, it's saying redeeming time because the days are evil. When you are redeemed, there is something that you can also redeem because time is a very special commodity that everyone is freely given, whether you are rich, poor, you are given time. Instead of killing time, let us redeem it. Instead of counting the days, let us make the days count. We must live a life of impact. You know, you will never be the age that you are now. It's now that you are in that age. So make an impact, live a life worthy of the gospel. Use the time that God has given you. Time is a strange commodity. We can't save it or retrieve it or relieve it or stretch it or borrow it or loan it or stop it or store it. We can only use it or lose it. So every day, depending on your priorities and where your hopes are and where your treasures are it's either you are living a wasted life or a life of impact or you can even live an unlived life christ says in john uh, chapter 9 verse 4 i must work while it's day to for him that sent me while uh, for the night cometh no one can work there is a time where you are able to do something but there comes a t comes a time where you cannot do what you can do now there is a time where you wish that you can do what you can do now and it will be a regret so to avoid regrets when you have opportunity knocking for you to do something for god to be in service for god use that opportunity time is one of the seven dimensions but we can use that dimension to enter any dimension because time becomes the key to any of the dimensions now we'll look at just our lives uh, you are given 24 hours a day let's see how you use your 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 hours um, the first um, maybe eight hours you spend them asleep meaning that it's healthy anyway to live eight hours to to sleep for eight hours but it actually means that we spend a third of our life asleep if you sleep eight hours by the time you are 60 years you have spent 20 years asleep how do you account for what happened in 20 years you say lord i was asleep and now already when you wake up it means you are behind time by the time you wake up you have to run because you are behind time now maybe you spend the next 30 minutes deciding whether to wake up or not now it means you are already losing a lot of time and some of the bachelors they will spend the next 30 minutes looking for their socks under the bed now if you use 30 minutes every day looking for your socks it means that um, in every two days you are losing an hour looking for socks and in every month you are losing a day looking for socks and in every year you are losing 12 days looking for socks 
So your life, you have lost a lot of time. Then maybe you are going to use the next maybe three hours or so. It includes eating, bathing, and to the sisters, there's a mirror there. If you are going to spend one hour looking at the mirror, and you can't spend one hour looking at the mirror of God, then there's a challenge. You must spend time to build your hopes on things eternal. You know, if I had 10,000 lives to live on earth, I would live all of them for Christ. Because there is no better life and higher life than living for the gospel. And when you start living for Christ, it's as if you never lived. It's like you are starting to live. So, some people spend more time on things that are dead. Because nails and hair is dead things. If you cut your nails or your hair, you don't paint because those are dead things. But if you are alive, you don't spend too much time on dead things, but you spend more time on your soul for what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. Maybe two hours. Um, some of you get into the bathroom to bath, then you spend the next 30 minutes on your phone not bathing. And you are losing time. Now, maybe the next four hours, you are spending it on your cell phone. Your phone can tell you how much time you spend on your cell phone. Some of you spend five hours a day on your cell phone. That is um, addiction. It means you are an addict of that cell phone. That cell phone is locking you in cells. That's why it's called a cell phone. You are, you are an addict and you are in prison. Then we may spend the next eight hours at work. So... It means two-thirds of our time is either we are asleep or we are at work. Then the next three hours, you are doing schoolwork. If you are at school or so, uh, but if you are a full-time school person, you may spend eight hours at school. But as parents, you may be also busy helping children with school. But I think we are almost done with 30, 24 hours. With just adding what we have here, we have used more than 24 hours, but we haven't done nothing. That's why some people are so busy. They are so busy, but nothing has been done. When the day starts, they are so busy. They are running and doing, brother, he's off and he's by the corner and, and nothing is done at the end of the day. Then the other three hours with the family, yeah, because remember, even if you are a good pastor, you still have to be a good husband. You still have to be a good father. You still have to be a good child. You still have to be a good neighbor. You still have to be a good you yourself. You must also get time alone. One of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is time alone with God. Where you don't phone anyone. The problem is when you are alone, you quickly phone someone. I'm lonely, I'm lonely. Someone was saying, a good friend of mine was saying, if you feel lonely when you are alone, you are in bad company. <laughs> you are with a wrong self. <laughs> Then some of you spend three hours waiting for Zubko Pass. Three hours a day waiting for Zubko Pass. Now, brother, that, that, that is a disaster. That's why sometimes poverty can be a, a disaster because you can't control your time. Now, if you spend more than three hours waiting for Zubko Pass a day, it means every seven days you lose a, pass, a, a day waiting for, for the bus. So every week, there is a day that you lose for Zubko. Then it means every, every year, you lose 52 days waiting for Zubko bus. And every seven years, you lose one year waiting for Zubko bus. <laughs> so brother, there is a year that you lost, totally lost waiting for the past Zubko. That's why sometimes you can manage time when you are in control with the transport. When Philip saw that even a car, waiting for a car would be a disaster, he just switched on in the spirit and transported himself. There was no time to wait because the angel says, time shall be no more. Brother, you are living in a time when time shall be no more and then you give, uh, in seven years, you give one year to Zubko. Now, that's why by the time, you, you know, in our timetable there, we've already used more than 30 hours, but we have not prayed. 
So where is time to pray? Where is time to read the Bible? Because people are so busy in these days until they have no time to pray. They have no time to read the Bible. They have no time to visit their neighbor. They have no time to listen to tapes. They have no time even to testify. They have no time to meditate. They have no time to visit the sick. They have no time even alone with God, alone with themselves, even reflecting and evaluating. They have no time to repent or to forgive. They have no time to say sorry. They have no time with the parents. All the time they are feeding the blood dog, which is the flesh. And there is no time to feed the inner man. In Malachi 3, it says people were giving sacrifice of lamb sacrifice. When an animal was blind or was crippled or paralyzed, they would say, this one is for the Lord. Now, you, the time when you are now sleepy, that's when you say, now let me pray. That is a lame sacrifice. Because you pray when you have already made a wall in the blanket to say, Lord, 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 then you're gone. Give quality time to God. I think God is a jealous God. When he looks at how much you give to Facebook, and how much you give to him there are things that eat our time and those things will eat us <laughs> there are things that are devouring your time and there are things that are stealing your time they say procrastination is the thief of time when you are saying i shall do it tomorrow the best time is to do, to do it now if there is something worth doing you rather do it today if you have to appreciate someone, appreciate them today, they may not be there tomorrow. If you have to read a certain message, read it today, you may, who said you'll be there tomorrow? Something is stealing your time and is bribing you with some, uh, some gratification of likes and loves and things, but you, time is gone, brother. Remember, if you lose your phone, you can replace it. If you lose your car, you can replace it. If you lose your shoe, you can replace it. But if you lose time, you will never replace it. So there are things that are gadgets that are eating our time. You see, a brother is online at 1 a.m. But at 1 a.m. he is not praying. He's online until he's typing nonsense. He's asleep and you see letters are being lost. And, but he wants to be online. He wants to be online. <laughs> The men of Athens spent their time in nothing else but to tell or hear a new thing. So if you are always on WhatsApp and Facebook and you have no time to pray, you, are, you belong to Athens. <laughs> you are spending your time either to hear or to tell a new thing. But such gossipers will be good with the gospel if they give their time to the gospel because they can tell the story of the, of the old cross, old racket cross. Now the Bible says, as a door turns around its hinges, a lazy man turns back and forth his bed. Laziness is a devourer of time. And there is nothing as clumsy as a lazy sister. Of course, it's evil to be a lazy brother, but a lazy sister is too much. Time is running out, brothers. One of these days, we won't be here. The times of Daniel came, this is our time. The times of Moses came. This is our time. What are we doing in our time? I was even saying the other time that uh, some of us are winning less souls than, than John West. John West is dead, but he's winning more souls through his literature than you who is alive. Brother Pranam is gone, but he's winning more souls through his steps than you who is alive today. Michael Jackson is gone, but he's making more money today than you who is alive. How can you in your days do less than someone who is gone? Actually, Brother Branham in his grave, through the tapes, he's doing more for God than many of us. The regrets of great men is the time that they lost. The prophet says, if I repented and turned to God, when I was 12 years old. That's what he has given 2 million souls to Christ. But he's saying my regret. When Peter was dying he regretted. Not in receiving the message. But he says my regret. Is that I have only one life to lose for Christ. 
I wish I had 10,000 lives to die on the cross for Christ. Now the prophet says, I spend most of my time in prayer. I have to. Be honest today, where do you spend most of your time? Uh, you don't have to be a long prayer warrior who prays 20, 40 minutes or, or one hour or five hours. But you can pray more hours by praying many times. Because you are always connected. Even if you are someone who prays 15 minutes, if you pray 15 minutes 20 times a day, now stop saying i have no time because stop saying if i had time everyone is saying if i had time you have the time that it, uh, pastor Manasa was telling us that you know there are preachers when they are failing to preach they say brother uh, uh, if i had time i was going to say you have time you have time if you are given five minutes to preach that's time enough you can manage your five minutes and preach the gospel with salvation, with the healing, with deliverance, with the rapture, with eternity, with the seals, with the thunders in five minutes. There was a time when people were backsliding going to the beer hall. Then there was a man who went to the beer hall, the people there and said, can you give me time to preach? They said, no, our program does not allow. We we'll only give you five minutes. He says, thank you, thank you. He preached those five minutes and the beer hall closed. Everyone went back to church. There is one, our life, one day will be just depending on time. There is one time where the only trip you are on is time. Where it's only seconds that are flowing into your body and then you go home. At that time, I don't want to be a coward. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I don't want no trouble then. At that time is not time to look for the Holy Spirit. Look for the Holy Spirit now. It's not time to repent when you are dying. Repent now. Don't come to God when your strength is gone. When you have no teeth. When you have no power to preach. When you have strength in the days of your youth. Bring your strength to God. Yeah. Right. Susanna Wesley. Had 19 children. But she had about 3 hours to pray for them. I believe even if she lived in the days of technology she was still going to have three hours because what we give god is not the remainder but what you give your phone is the remainder when you wake up before you touch your phone touch be in touch with god telephone to jesus be, he, jesus is on the main line tell him what you want that's why she produced john wesley in those days they had no washing machine they would go to the to get the water from the well but they say it is well things were all good but now you press for dishes you press this you're ironing everything is wrong but you have no time young girl what is eating your time if you go to your phone your phone can tell you the apps that are draining your battery today we want to identify what is draining you spiritually when I see you tired at the church, what is draining you? Samson, where is your strength? There is a Delilah up that is draining your spiritual battery. Now the prophet says, some of you young people have wasted your living. The hours that mother spent in prayer for you and dead. And all the teaching that has been done to you. Yet you turned it aside. And you listened to the whisper of the devil everything that was given you you turned it aside and you listened to the whisper of the devil and you are now desiring the music of the world and the things of the world you, you, you are bound now the prophet says put your life your time your money, your talent your everything there is not a song that give God don't just sing that take this, take this Give him your time. Do you know that you never have time that is called time for this? It's you who labels the 24 hours. When the 24 hours start, uh, starts, you are given a package by God, but you label it for the devil. Your soul is worth 10,000 worlds, but your body that you give more time 
is worth 84 cents. You spend more time on the mirror, more time on good clothing, but you have no time to be dressed by the word of God. That's why in Laodicea they are increased with goods and they, they say we have need of nothing, but they are wretched, miserable. You are spending things, time on things that are corruptible, where moth and rust corrupt. But build your hopes on things eternal. Because fire shall reveal your work. If you are building on hay and wood, you shall lose. Now you realize that we have ten times the temptations that our fathers have, but we pray half the time. We, have, we are always on our gadgets. We are always busy. And there is no one, that's why no one is seeing visions. We are busy on television. No one is even being touched by God because too much time is spent on material things. Do you know from when we were born, our time is already allocated. First six, first two or three years, you are at school in preschool there. Then the next seven years, you are in primary school, is taken. Then the next uh, two years, you are in uh, doing form six, form four. four. Um, after doing form one to form four, you get to form, form five, form six. Afterwards, you go five years in the university. But the greatest, you, you see, the first teacher who teaches you is your mother. Te the fifth gospel. Teaching the senses of the body to touch its heart. See this, she's teaching the senses of the body. Then the teacher in the high school teaches the senses of the spirit memory imagination and reasoning all those is teaching that but we have the biggest dropouts when people leave the university they don't go to the next teacher the holy spirit who teaches you how to watch and pray and live rejoicing now families are broken because everyone is busy with their gadgets you visit your parents, you don't see them, you are busy on the phone and saying, yes, 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 there is no fellowship. Home life is in shallow waters because of those gadgets. Now, each new day gives us 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, and 86,000 seconds every day. That is a precious gift. 86,000 seconds. If each day is giving you 144,000 minutes but if someone gives you 144,000 um, 144,000 dollars you rejoice brother you say 144,000 dollars but God gives you 144,000 minutes that can translate into eternity now if you don't want to spend time with God you will never spend eternity with him. Someone said, Oh, that I may not loiter on my heavenly chain. Loitering, why, why? It's for the devil. The devil was asked, where, where, where are you from? I'm from going up and down. Brothers, don't be someone who comes to town to go up and down. And when you come to town to do something, and you meet other brothers don't say ah brothers then you talk for five hours then you the the shop is closed where you are going then tomorrow you come again to buy that thing then you meet other brothers until the shop is closed again it's too late to redeem time that is past but not to redeem time that is passing you may not redeem what happened in the past but we are equipping you to stand and have an impact you are always going to steal time somewhere like for me today i slept around half past 4 a.m but by seven i was awake because something was more important than my sleep i had to steal time to say look i can't just appear in the pulpit without being in the framework spiritually to deal with what it takes now the prophet says you must have god must have the first place in your heart the first place in your life the first place in everything that you do god must be first he doesn't want the second place he doesn't deserve the second place he deserves the best and the first and all what we got he deserves it 
How can God come and give you 24 hours and then you start saying, God, all right, if I'm free, I'll give you a minute. God came to give you 24 hours when he was dishing 24 hours today. Some people didn't get a share. They are gone now. But if someone from hell will rise and is given two seconds, they will come running straight to the altar. They won't see any of you. If someone from hell is given an opportunity to hear what you are hearing, that person will go straight on their tears to make right with God and that is the opportunity you have as a brother, as a sister seated today. Right. God put you here to be a son and daughter of God. If you fail to get that, you fail to receive the very purpose that God put you to be here. When this a school is built, it's built for education. But some people go to school and they spend time in extracurricular activities. They excel in running. They excel in draft and in chess. And then they are chased away from school for failing exams. So in this life, we are not here to make money. Those are extracurricular activities. The whole purpose of man is to fear God and to do his commandments. Right and wrong is a choice. Every man, every woman, boy or girl has to choose whether he's going to try to live right or not live right. It's a choice. God has given you time, but you can then choose because there is a time to sing, there is a time to... But you cannot pray too much. You can do everything else too much. You can sing too much. You can preach too much. You can be happy too much. You can cry too much, but you cannot pray too much. You need more time with your maker. It's very easy to lose time. Look at this. Um... It's very easy to lose time. If you have seen this thing, you have successfully lost 10 seconds of your life. Who is going to bring you back? Sorry, guys, I was involved also. But who is going to give you back that 10 seconds? If you are always on WhatsApp and uh, you, you have no time to enrich your inner man. Your inner man is withering and drying and starving and malnourished. And you are busy. Kiki, 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 quacks, quacks inside. Inside here, yeah, you are dying. Now, if today was your last day on earth, what extra thing were you going to do? Me, there is nothing. That's what I'm doing. There is nothing more, brother. I live as I'm going today. I have to preach as a dying man to dying people. I have to pray as a dying man knowing that one day I'll be gone and I know I'll be right with God. I won't, don't want to regret it that time. Do you know that by the time you reach the age of 75, the clock and watches of this world will have ticked a total of 2.5 billion seconds. And you say you are not a billionaire. You are given 2.5 billion seconds and nothing comes out. No soul. No soul. One to Christ. After 2.5 billion seconds, if I would calculate your rate of winning souls by saying, give me the date when you were born, I will calculate how many seconds you have breathed God's oxygen and produced nothing for the kingdom. When the day starts your to-do list, you must write what you want to do. Write it down. Some people say nothing. When you say nothing, the devil says, then bring that list. You start saying, go and visit this pornographic site. Go and do this one. Go and do it. Because you have nothing to do. But when you are too busy, the devil cannot send you to do anything. Because the program is filled. You are too busy to allow the devil in your life. Then you are busy blaming the cat for eating. The cat, it's you, no cat. You are the one who chooses. The cat has eaten time. The cat is, You are the one who has eaten time. You are wasting too much time. 
by, by the time you get to 40, a lot will have changed in your life. At that time, you must be having a momentum. The prophet says, at some time you will live on the ashes of a past reputation. But when you are young, you make yourself when you are young. You have to build the momentum that you can ride on at some time. I'm so glad that when I was a very young man, I did what I, could, I can't do now. And now I'm doing what I could not do then. And every time I will find something that I failed to do and I will do it. Yes, you say time flies. Yes, time is filled with swift transition. Nothing on earth unmoved can stay, but they are people who are unmoved because they are eternity being. Every time your heart beats, you are closer to the graves than before. But as you are closer to your death, what have you achieved? What are you leaving for the generations to come? Your life must have an impact for the next generations. Now the prophet is revising and refocusing. It is important for you as a believer to revise, evaluate, and refocus. Because you are busy, it doesn't mean you are efficient. When you are busy doing something, it doesn't mean you are efficient. Sometimes we are so busy doing it the wrong way. Oh. If a car drives to Harare the whole day, it doesn't mean it's a busy car. It's just not efficient. It's driving to Harare and people are saying, that's the car, that's it. The other one does it in three hours, it's there. <laughs> now, he says, do you think that the Almighty God will give me the ministry that is like this, with the supernatural signs and things that has never been seen in the, since the New Testament, and let me walk in error? Certainly not. Brother, when I come back from overseas, I'm putting the biggest part of my time not on divine healing and miracles, but on preaching the word of God. That's exactly right. Refocus. The prophet was busy. You will sleep eight days. Eight days at the pulpit praying for people. But he reached a time when he says, look, I'm busy. And I was sleeping at the pulpit and I was praying for people day and night. But he says, look, there is a higher goal that I must hit. I must preach the gospel. Instant in season and out of season. You need to refocus even in your business. Sometimes me, I see patients when I start, I don't even rest. Lunch time I'll be on. But it doesn't mean I'm doing things right. I have to go back and say, Lord, am I doing things the way? Because you can be tired from doing it the wrong way. I haven't got too much time to ramble around uh, 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 the way I'm doing now. Be, that's the prophet. He's an honest man. He's saying, look, the way I'm doing it is not the way I should be doing it. Rather be honest that sometimes the way we are doing things is not the way we should be doing them. I'll be a real old man, so um, not able to do it. And I know that I, I will be only mortal once. Do you know you won't be mortal again? You'll be mortal once. And in those days when you are mortal, in that body, you'll never be in that body without transformation before. While you are still in that body, do something, shake that body to work for God. He says, I want every minute of my time to count for the Lord Jesus Christ. I've noticed that many times when I'm seeing patients, that's when I get a lot of revelations. You know, I'm seeing uh, patients, but God is also visiting me. Things are happening. Sometimes people see me posting scriptures or quotes. They say, person is free. They phone, they hear that he's busy with a patient. In between patients, I just write something and I post to encourage somebody. But I'm busy until because I must be about my father's business. They say, the mystery about time is that time is one direction. It's a one way. So, even if you stop, it's moving. You are, it's like, it's a belt. You are moving as you are stopping. Amen. So, it's a one way, but that king, we shall discover it that we can go back the other way. Into eternity. We came from God and we go back to time. They say time is so weird that it completely stops when you move at the speed of light. And uh, in the black hole, it doesn't exist. 
even some people who are in blackness of sin they think time doesn't exist as long as they're in this mortal time be one day you account for every second and every minute someone said when i was a child i laughed and wept time was creeping it was creeping like a child when i was a youth i dreamed and talked time was now working at that time you know when we were children we thought christmas was next of next year <laughs> when i was a fully grown man time was now running when i get older daily time is flying soon i'll find that time is gone but what remains behind just a memory that there was someone who was born but nothing happened he died this this is the greatest joy of my time to see sinners come some certifying something in my heart just speaks peace when i see sinners come brother it's higher than when i see money coming into the account when i hear a message saying there is a deposit into your account I'm, I'm happy i'm happy but when i hear that someone has repented brother that is the greatest joy the greatest thing in all my life is loving him more than anything in my life i want to make it i want to hear his voice saying welcome my son well done he says if the lord spares me i've got a little time left I want to spend every ounce of my time for Christ. Prayers. Prayer is what changes things. The secret of all is that it's prayer. I spend a great part of my life, sometimes weeks and weeks, in prayer. When I read this, I was challenged. When you are praying, it's not like when you are praying for Sata. It's not when you are praying for a meal and you are saying, Father, Father, and your digestion has started. When you pray until you forget time and space and where you are and your name, and you are into the heavenlies, on the wings of the sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear. Someone said, uh, the prophet says, my work is in the realm of the spirit. That's why I spend a big part of my life in another dimension that the world knows nothing about. And I speak in the name of the Lord Jesus and they don't understand. He says he spends most of his time in another realm that no one knows about. Some of you spend most of your time in another website that we don't know about. When you start doing what you were created to do, sometimes you waste time doing what is against our system when you are working you get tired so easy because it's against your system but when you are praying brother you don't see you are going on and on because it's a rhythm with your spiritual being do you have time the songwriter says do you have time for the tabs to tap into the untapped resources Give me a preacher, give me a Christian, give me a housewife, that is a Christian. Give me a farmer or factory worker that will put God first in everything. And I will show you someone that is successful in spite of what the devil can put. In spite of the days of Corona, in spite of poverty, in spite of your weaknesses and your past. You shall be successful if you put God first in everything. Even if you are a maid, you can put God first in everything. Even if you are a preacher. I believe I told you the other night that true value, nothing but lost souls, is the only thing that has got value in it. Money passes away. Homes decay and go away. Everything in the earth will pass away. The only lasting value, I would rather have one soul in glory that I've won to Christ. I would rather have Jesus than all the silver and gold. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, it says, The race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong or food to those who are wise of wealth, but time and chance happeneth to all. 
you have a chance to be a better version of yourself you have a chance to be the kind of brother that God wants you to be. You have a chance this morning. You have a chance this afternoon. Let's maximize our lives. Don't live an unlived life. No one will value your time. No one will value your time if you don't value it yourself. Uh, we won't lose time, right? Um, don't be too busy for God almost persuaded it seems now some soul to say go spirit go thy way it's a more convenient day the only convenient time is now Amen. don't allow distractions you you must be uh, resolved no longer to linger Amen. resolved to go for the goal Amen. don't lose time on things that don't help you invest Put investment, not in Mauritius, not in China. Put investments in heaven. After that, you can then put investment everywhere else. Distractions, you know, when you are running and aiming for something. Even if you see food, don't look. If you are, don't allow things to distract you. When you are fasting, if you see food, move fast ahead. When you are praying, if there is a knock at the door, keep on praying. Don't allow distraction. Lost opportunity will haunt you. Everyone had an opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit. Everyone had an opportunity to have a transformation in their hearts. The person who took this photo died of suicide. Because he was working as a photographer. So you saw this child was crawling to a United Nations food point and the vulture was stalking the child. Do you know when the devil sees that you are vulnerable, he stalks you. You'll be following you because he sees that you are not reading, you are not praying, so he knows that you are going to die. So when he took that for this touching picture there. So, but because as a foreigner he was not supposed to handle things, he left this child and it's not known whether the child reached the food aid point or he was eaten by the vulture. So when the man went to his home, the photographer, after winning the prize, something tormented him. He said, I could have done something. I believe he went back to that spot where he took the photo. The vulture was not there. The child was not there. He says, Lord, how can I correct this? He died. You know, there is something you can do now to somebody that you may not see tomorrow. Don't be rolling in the same mistakes, in the same things of the past. But progress and don't jump to a step. Take the steps as they come. Time is not reversible. Time is inelastic. And don't try to do the right things at the wrong time. While you have time now, work your calling and election. 
if you lose time running after money, you will lose that money running now for, for real things of God. Because you lose your health running after money, you will soon lose the money running after health. There must be a deadline to everything. If, if what you are doing is not deadline, you know, if we have to do something, put a deadline and say, today it must be done. Yeah. So that you can measure your targets and success. A day can slip by when you are deliberately avoiding what you are supposed to do. There is something that you have not done and you are supposed to do. Some of you wrote in, in New Year the resolutions that you have not done and you are now waiting for another year to write new resolutions. And now you are saying, Corona, I took my resolution. If your resolution can be taken by Corona, they are cheap. If you made your resolutions with God, nothing can take them away. Sometimes you have to set your alarm to wake up. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Some of you are not yet baptized here. Because yesterday you said tomorrow. And tomorrow of yesterday is today. You just have to do it. Now, he says, in a time when you hear the word um, salvation, now is the day of salvation. He says, for such a time as this came I into the world, God is good all the time. So all the days of your life, you must see the goodness of God. This is the busiest generation ever. But they are generating nothing from their being busy. Do you value your time? Do you have time to reflect? The Bible says from the, from the, from the time of John, the kingdom of God is preached and everyone presses into it. Press into the divine program of your, of your life. What God has for you, press into it. Our greatest danger is letting the urgent things crowd the important things. They are urgent things. It's now urgent things. They are needed. Things are needed. But it's now making you not pray because there is something urgent. So the urgent things, something may be urgent, but not as important as prayer. Remember, life is too short for us to do everything we want to do, but it's long enough for us to do everything God wants us to do. Whatever I want to do in this life, in this life is too short to do all those things. But I want to do thy will, O Lord. Take me, shape me, mold me, and make me. I want to do your will, O Lord. John Wesley wrote a letter to his wife and said, redeeming the time, catching the golden moments as they fly, catching the sermon as it flies. These are golden moments. Catch them as they fly. says, may the Spirit enable us to live wisely and catch the golden moment as they fly. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. We shall have eternity to, in which we shall celebrate victories. But only one short hour before the sunset to win them. Before sunset, win a victory. There is a sunset coming now. When you put your head against the pillow, Reflect. Don't just rub on the pillow without reflecting. When you put that head against the pillow, say, is God happy with how I used my 24 hours? Am I getting somewhere or I'm going round in circles? All we have is now. As, we, as this moment slips through our fingers like sand, we have this moment today. So, the Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may present thee a heart of wisdom. So, do whatever it takes because you can't rewind that moment of life. I've seen people saying, precious memories. I've seen some people saying, oh, mommy, you were good. The mommy is gone. But you have your mom now, nothing. You have never visited them this week. You have never done anything. You have your father is out. You are waiting to post for us that, oh, mommy was a good mommy. She's alive now. Charles Spetchon says that the, 
credit that it gives to his ministry, why it was so successful. There were people in the boiler room that were coming to pray before the service until the minister be inspired to catch the mind of God because there was the boiler room, the people, the prayer warriors who dedicated their times to bring the heat of the sermon when they are praying before the service. If some of you, when you are going to school, school starts at quarter past seven, by ten past seven, you are at school. But church starts at ten. By twelve o'clock, we have not arrived. You have never been early to church this year. But at school and at work, because you are working for money, and you, you, you are right punctual because there is a logbook. Here we have no logbook, so you come anytime. But I can't wait for them doors to open. What about what about tithing your time? And then after us doing offerings. <laughs> If you tithe your time, you are going to have two hours, 24 minutes. It's not two hours, 40 minutes. It's two hours, 24 minutes. Amen. Where did it go? You tithe it to Facebook. Yes. Because you did tithe your time to your girlfriend. That's right. You did tithe your time Amen. to your habits. Right. You did tithe your time hey. to dirty magazines. Hey. But why don't you say... I want to pay tithes where I say two hours, 40 minutes. Before I do my offerings, before you start giving offerings to God, you say this two hours, 24 minutes, I give it to God. I don't say, I didn't say find time for God every day. I say make time for God every day. You are not going to find time that you be, be, even the president will say that one is for God. And you ask someone, the teacher says that one is for God. Make time. You think you are busy? Daniel was a provincial administrator. He was one of the directors of the, of the kingdom that was running the world. And he prayed three times a day. One of the best gifts you can give yourself is time with God. Don't lose that time with God because you want to have time with somebody else. Don't leave this earth having let everyone use you except God. Some of you have been used by people. You have been used by schools, by churches, by what? But yes, God used you. This is the 11th hour. This is the time to run for your life. This is the time when Lot was dilly dialing. The angels said, Get out here quickly. There's no time for lingering. You have to press in, brother. Time is at hand. Mercy is ending. You must press in because there will come a time when you will scream to and cry to receive the Holy Ghost, but it will be shut from you. Do you know that this court, this court will torment some of you? when we are gone. Because I know this court, you will remember it. I've said it many times. Eh? But when you then realize that it has happened, it's going to be more tribulation than the tribulation. The knowledge that you are in the tribulation will be more painful than the tribulation. Today is the day. If you are not born again, I challenge you this afternoon. To do something. Time is fleeing, brothers. Time is no more. You rather be an addict of the gospel. You rather be an addict so given until they say with Enoch was reading in the book of Joshua. They, they say Enoch, um, he was so much in friendship with God. His time was always for God. He would disappear for five hours praying before God. Then he comes back to say, oh, oh I'm a father. Oh, where are the children? Then he goes back, he disappears two weeks in prayer. Then he comes back and says, oh, I have to catch up. Oh, I hear that there is a newborn someone next door. I hear that there is someone who is singing a song somewhere. I don't know the song. I hear someone has opened a chest somewhere. Then he goes to God again five months. 
Then he went and disappeared in the presence of God. <laughs> That's how it happens. You start maybe with that boy for five minutes. Then next time you are two hours with that boy. Next time you are taken. That's how it is with God. You start with one scripture and then you find, ah. Today, actually, when I slept around, it was almost five o'clock. I slept around half four. But I had said that today I would sleep in. But you see, you have to, I was busy at the center, I was busy doing other things. I had to make sure I don't just come unprepared. But you people, you, you, you betray us. I prepare for hours. And you just come unprepared and you just look at me like a pumpkin. <laughs> anyway, let me pump the word now. <laughs> Don't live an unlived life. I have to close now. I, I believe I'm challenging somebody to be a better person. There is someone who did excellently well. They built barns and they extended them. The mother was so proud. But God was not. God came. You know, sometimes when you are busy saying, this is pericardine, brother. This is what? We want to see how naked you are inside here, in the heart. There is nothing, nothing, nothing in the heart in here. And God says, fool, your soul shall be required of you. That person called a fool by God was called the celeb by man. What is God saying about your program? Are you really honoring God with your time, with your money, with your resources, with your soul, with your heart, with your strength, with your mind, with your everything? Father, when this message catches you well, when this Holy Ghost gospel catches you well, you forget about your prestige. There is no smart person when the Holy Ghost comes down. There is no quiet person when the Holy Ghost comes down. When you realize what you are born to be, when you are anointed to become, what you are born to be. I want to close now. Let's go, let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet so that I can be able to close because I must manage time here. <laughs> you must discover the purpose. I was saying that the doctors will discover the cause of death. But you must discover the cause of birth. That for such, for this cause. If you are here and you are still wondering why you were born. At this age. You are almost developing beard and you still don't know why you were born. Hmm. I want to challenge you sisters. You are not born to be a busy body. The devil is using you. Well, on the positive, it shows you are usable. But you are being used by the wrong person. When I looked at my life running so fast, I'm not young anymore. But I was young, now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous for second. You know, I had to give my life before I had a house, before I had anything, evidently churches are planted, more than 36 churches everywhere. I was busy and marriage never stopped me. When I got married, I planted more churches with the help of my wife, the support of my wife. I don't understand when you get married and you stop singing here. You get married, then you, you, you fade off. If you are singing special, sing with your wife, sing with whosoever. Today, I challenge you. If you want your life to matter, I will help you in prayer today. I want everyone to pray. We want to rededicate our lives to say, Lord, maybe we never lived the way you want us to live. The prophet says, he ran to the altar also in the blushing prophet and said, Lord, I'm also guilty. I've been losing time unnecessarily. I've been losing time the devil is stealing time, but I don't want to lose anything now. I want to win souls in this year more than in any other year. There is no excuse. We can win souls even now. As we all close our eyes, meditating. What shall a man give in exchange? 
You know, it's not how long you shall live on this earth. Some people live 103 years and they go to hell. Because they, it's just the length of days they had. But they were not used by God. Now, young boys, I want to challenge you to be useful. Until you say, use me, Jesus. Lord, no, don't refuse me. You have a potential, my sister, to be used of God. Until you are never negative any time in your life. Even in the hardest times, you are positive. You always have a celestial joy. You are never a memory, you are never a complainer, but every day you are hopeful. You are always seeing more of Jesus until you are the very billboard in the reflection of Christ. Let us pray, our Heavenly Father. We realize time is fleeing. This is another generation. Generations have been passing and others coming. One day this generation will go. These people who are young here, Father, one day they shall be fathers and mothers. What shall they show to you? What are they going to present to the Lord at the end of their journey? He's not going to be touched by anything except his testimony. Some of them have done well. They have passed in their exams. They have done well, Father. They have cars, they have lands. But what do they have in heaven? I would rather have Jesus than all the silver and gold. Father, some are realized they spend more time in the mirror. They spend more time on WhatsApp. They spend more time on Facebook. That's why they have problems. They have no time to pray. They have no time to fast. They have no time to check themselves. Father, but they are checking and saying, Lord, give me another chance. Another chance to do thy will, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we have all made mistakes, but we are coming and we are saying, Lord, help us to be instruments of salvation, to be instruments of this gospel. Father, we are praying that every time, let our life preach to our neighbors. Let our life preach, Father, until souls who come, Father, let us speak of salvation at home and abroad. Father, I pray that we be so jealously guard and redeem time because the time we have belongs to God. And Father, we shall stand one day to answer how we lived our lives. We are living in borrowed time. We are living in the end times. We are living in the time when shadows are falling and death's night is coming. Our hearts are beating. And we are marching to the rapture or to the grave. Heavenly Father, one day our bodies will have no strength. But when we have strength, Father, I pray that Heavenly Father help us to win souls. If there is someone here who has never won a soul, may you equip them, may you ignite them, may you fill them with your power. May you fill them with the Holy Spirit. If there are hearts here that are full of demons, may they be delivered. Those that are full of lust, those that are spending time on filthy things, Spending time destroying their souls, destroying their bodies, destroying their testimonies, spending time in hypocrisy, spending, spending time on dirty things. Father, may they awake and expose these demons of Laodicea, these spirits that want your children to be shamed, that want your children to be nothing. Father, I see there are girls and boys here, Father, who are making choices of life. They are choosing today to be surrender to be a sanctuary pure and holy for you father i'm praying that your spirit will come and take them father father you know there is a chance even for the backslider there is a chance for wayfaring man there is a chance for those who are hungering and thirsting there is a chance for those who are sorry those who have spent their time and they are saying like the political son i've wasted many precious years but now i'm coming home Father, help us to number our days. When these people wake up, oh Lord, Father, may they never touch anything before you touch them. May they never prioritize things that kill their souls until they live in catches of discouragement, in catches of an unlived life. Father, through this gospel that has been preached, let the sword of the Spirit dissect to the heart of your people to make them prepare, to make them run and value their time let them read the seals, let them read the church edges. Let them Father, spend their time on things that matter. Build their hopes on things eternal. Help them, Father, all of them to be soul winners. 
He has them all of them, Father, to be busy with the gospel. When we saw Paul forsaking all, becoming a prisoner for Christ, may we, all of us be prisoners for this gospel to live according to your way, according to your will. We commit everything to your powerful hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this teaching subject. May it hit right at the fifth rib and transform the lives of your people that we may never desire to lose one second. Father, use me again to win the whole area of Matebele and beyond reaching, even international, even far in the regions beyond the seas. Father, may people get hope through this ministry, through the online ministry also. May souls that were doomed, souls that were in darkness, those who are hopeless, those who are not finding peace in their lives, Father, may they always find peace when they not in. May they always find something that this world cannot give them. As I bless them and I commit everything to your powerful hands, resolving no longer to linger, but to wait for you, to wait until Jesus comes. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We have come to the end of this service. Go and set your life. Remove the weeds of time. Things that eat your time. Then you will live to celebrate the choices you have made today. God bless you. We will sing as we dismiss.